Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're going to be taking a look at Dia Simulator, your average everyday Dia game on the Nintendo Switch. A self-described a slow life, a town destruction entry, there's very little I can add to that tagline honestly, so hit subscribe if you love the Switch, as much as we all do here, join our growing family, and let's get started. So first up, no score today, everything that would traditionally make you turn away from a game is used here as a positive, as a direct element of the joke. So yeah, I'm going to be giving you the rundown of what to expect and you can kind of take it from there. Also, I'll be skipping story, there's elements here, but none that really makes any sense. So opening the game, you're actually greeted with a character creator and call me confused at this point, you're building a human on a nice little like builder. That said, I thought this was Deer Simulator though, that was my initial thought. What is this all about? Well, moments later, the game answers that very question, you're crossing a road, a truck is barreling towards a deer. Yeah, you save them and now you are hit by that truck. You get the question, do you want to be reborn? You'll awaken then as titled Deer in a park. The game's priority at this point give you a very basic control related tutorial movement with the left stick, jump with B, X is action so maybe you'll pick something up or let's say drive a car because yes you can drive, you'll stretch your neck with the left trigger which is both an attack and grappling manoeuvre, you can sprint on two legs with said R and then you can also attack with said R. Of course, a deer who attacks though was my first priority and I immediately found a citizen and went to town. Turns out you're basically a boxer landing punch after punch on two feet. One thing I did notice, stretchy neck maneuver, a little underutilized except for in bus moments. The game from here then after the tutorial gives you very little direction, it throws this weird world in front of you, you know I could see immediately flying elephants, giant cows, koala bears of the oversized variety dangling from buildings. I had no idea what I was supposed to do, but I can tell you immediately, the controls, it's built around that kind of, you know, the physics of broken world, but that's what makes it entertaining. If you've ever played something like Goat Simulator, this is probably going to be for you in that sense. You know, it's floaty with its jumps, you'll clip with near everything in this world. The collision detection could be described as maybe weak at best. And the stretchy neck concept, often uncontrollable, but pair it with that ragdoll physics, and yes, you will be entertained. You know, how can I break the game next was kind of my consistent theme. Also, then expect a frame rate here that tanks with too many enemies on screen. But I even found myself here questioning, is that all part of it? Is this on purpose? While I do wish it had a little more guidance though, I quickly picked up on the idea cause mayhem, there's a letter in the top right of the screen that fills as you cause destruction, so I did what any gamer would do, I absolutely filled that letter by destroying anything in sight. It turns out you can not only punch civilians, you can destroy cars with punches and buildings like a weird spin on the old Rampage titles. In these buildings then as they collapse you will find accessories, typically of the firing variety, before I knew it I had pistols for antlers, machine guns strapped to the side of my head, rocket launchers, I'd basically turned myself into some sort of like Robocop and causing destruction then activates what are the game's buses. So yeah, there is the concept, destroy stuff and watch buses arrive in the form of police, the opening is police sheep, then polar bears with cop cars on their backs, how about oversized bunny rabbits with laser vision and then a massive dog with stretchy attacks and a transformation into a robot. Deer Simulator's absolutely not shy with its weirdness, that is what kept me hooked. When I didn't think it could escalate any more, here comes a koala I need to fight with laser vision that is particularly pissed off. The game though treats these waves of police like a level in the sense that if you fail to kill all of these waves, they kill you first, then you will fail and it restarts. Now you need to build a new setup entirely, try a different strategy maybe even, so yeah, then you can progress. The saving point, that's when you travel into the future, it kind of marks the halfway of the game, but you can essentially look at this as two levels. In this new city though, expect flying cars, mech bosses, awful monkeys, and some incredible weaponry. Think a jukebox so you don't forget the music, the ability to electrocute enemies, lasers, jetpacks so you can fly, sprint faster boots, just all sorts of craziness. The concept's the same here then, beat some bosses and progress to a final level, which we won't spoil, but it's definitely like a standalone five minute segment. As you can probably tell though, the out there sense of humour and broken physics, I had fun honestly, the constant escalation in its threats was enough to leave me 
sitting there saying, where will this go next? It's also one of those games where Refuse will no doubt crush it and the right audience will love it. That's why I'm giving no score today. I understand its appeal and it doesn't necessarily play by the typical, you know, restraints. Here's the problem though, it's short. My first run was 60 minutes. If you die, it gives you extra lives in the form of hearts in the top left of the screen. It doesn't want to slow you down at all. It knows the pace it needs to keep to have you locked in. But yes, again, under 60 minutes, 20 bucks, that is definitely questionable. There's also then not a whole lot to go back for. The worlds are mostly lifeless. There's a few mini games hidden in here that make little sense. And yeah, there's no real additional modes. That was my big issue. I find it really hard just to now justify the cost. This needed maybe a speedrun mode. How about just a free run mode where you can do as you please, maybe rack up a high score. Optional quest, there's really nothing in here. There's maybe a couple of that are hidden away, but we won't spoil. The only new option really on the main menu at completion, you can skip straight to the final boss without playing the rest of the game. Knowing what I'm doing now as well, I think I could beat this in probably less than 30 minutes honestly. The first 10 minutes for me was working out what I needed to do and then a good chunk was really figuring out attack strategies. Games like Goat Simulator, they stick around because they have a rather large playground, this one definitely doesn't. There's a basic core mode though and that is it, the mode relies on shock factor with its enemy design and once you've played it once, that surprise and joke it's well, kind of over, you know? For me, gameplay wise, it's what you expect and I did have a good time, the weird physics, the ridiculous jokes, it's kind of broken, but in the right possible way. It's a weird genre though for sure and there's a big audience out there for it, but sadly this one, gameplay wise, it's definitely lacking on a content front. So early 3D is the way I would describe the graphics here. It's clean enough, but it's kind of like the houses and cars you draw as a kid, you know, kind of blocky, simplistic designs. Destruction then is huge chunks of buildings as they fall from the sky and movement, while your deer stands on two legs, so don't expect here realism. Cars will sip around though, just occasionally, the few pedestrians, they are stationary, waiting to be punched. The real winner, the animals, are deer standing, you know, with weapons strapped to the body, koalas hanging from buildings, a giant cow randomly overlooking a stadium. Visually, they're not really impressive, in fact they're barely animated, but it instantly latches onto that curiosity, so I think it's a win in the sense of, I guess, weirdness. Audio finally, and yeah, it's again strange. My favourite bit though, strapping a jukebox to your body in Future World and hearing that music play it definitely adds a lot. The world sounds pretty much empty when you first load up the game, but you get some basic low quality sound effects, you'll hear minor dialogue at times, and yeah, it's again so bad it's almost good. I really don't know how to do like describe the audio, there's a few good moments, it's inconsistent, it still though somehow suits the tone of the game. So the final verdict, and yeah, it fits into that niche genre of, well, I don't actually don't know what it's called, the goat simulator world where broken physics, visuals, animations, all the things you wouldn't normally forgive are not only forgiven, but actually celebrated. It's then packing a weird sense of humor as well. And yeah, you can definitely find the entertainment. I'd be lying if I didn't say I had a good time. It's so ridiculous. I had this smile on my face pretty much the entire run. And yeah, causing destruction, also a good time, it's just a constant escalation and that latches onto your curiosity. The problem, there's very little to keep you coming back. After 60 minutes, you've seen most of what the game has to offer. All completion has for you is a direct shortcut to the final boss. Maybe there's a few achievements you have that are left unturned. Shouldn't take you too long either. There's for sure weapons in here though that I did not find, for example, and a couple of secrets I still need to figure out. But it's not worth the cost in my eyes, if I'm being completely honest. If this is your genre, I'd say wait for a sale if you want something that's a little bit more strange, but kind of comes off feeling a little bit like a demo. It's entertaining, just not $20 entertaining. If they manage to add more content in the future though, which hopefully we will see, I can definitely see an audience kind of latching onto it. It's a you know niche genre, it's for sure creative, and there's not a huge amount of options out there. Just hopefully maybe they look at lowering this price a little bit sooner rather than later. So with that, will you be adding this one to the library then, or are you holding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family. And I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.